Hello everybody, I'm Top Table Lee, and today we're going to talk about Moonstone. Now, I've been looking forward to doing something with this game for quite a while now, as you might have seen in the groups. So before we get too far ahead and get stuck into the nitty gritty of what I think about the game, let's have a look at some models. I absolutely love the models in this game and I am in love with these goblin sculpts. Um, they're just so characterful, different to what you used to see in other uh, fantasy systems. Just a lot of fun for me really. Uh, the chap on the left here is called Beaky Bobby, who by all accounts is a magician sort of alchemist sort of chap. Um, his story in the book is quite horrific. <laughs> Doug the Flatulent, a fully armoured goblin knight riding a pug dog. Not really much else I can say about that. Uh, next in line is a fully armoured small goblin called the Vicious Midget. He has a hand, a severed hand strapped uh, to his back for some reason. Um, looking forward to reading his uh, his little bio in the rule book. Not got around to that yet, but uh, I'm sure there's uh, an interesting story behind that anyways. And the chap on the right is called Bug. He's a terrible, terrible mistake. He is a goblin and cockroach hybrid. Um, but I can't speak too badly of him because he really, really, um, he was uh, my man of the match. He was uh, my star player in the game I had against a uh, friend of the channel and all round lovely bloke, Matt Woods, last week. Um, coming up next, the humans. We'll have a little nosy at those guys. And here are the humans. We have Flintlock on the left with a rifle, Baron Von Fancy Hat, who's the leader of this uh, particular little squad. Um, then we have Eric the Squire, who has a wooden sword, which I think is absolutely fantastic. And then Friar Flavius, um, who is an absolutely disgusting excuse for a human being when you read his bio in the book. Again, what can I say about these sculpts? They are absolutely fantastic. And um, what I really liked about these was how easily they went together. I was really worried about Baron Von Fancy Hat because he's... Um, both of his arms are separate pieces, and I think his head was, head was as well, and his scabbard, and I didn't have any problem putting him together whatsoever. Um, so these guys, um, as you can see, that I've obviously painted them different to the to the goblins. I've gone for like the break of dawn sort of look here. So like a, I've gone for like a quite a cool blue, but then I've tried to uh, warm it up a little bit with like a flesh tone, peachy tone on the top, just to bring a bit of warmth through. Hopefully that comes across okay. Um, and again, it was just to make them really stand out towards the goblins who um, had gone for a bit more of a sunset as if so. The goblins are going out straight away to gather the moonstones and the humans are coming out just before dawn, probably because it's mild, maybe marginally safer and you're less in uh, inclined to bump into some big nasty gribblies if you're getting out just before the sun comes up. Um, so there, yeah, that's the humans. Um, I'm really happy with both of the factions, considering the uh, the speed that I painted them with. Um, but I think the concept of trying has, has come across quite well. Um, I just hope it comes across okay on camera. So, what about the game itself? I really enjoyed it. There's a lot to really enjoy about this game. When Matt and I played in the week, it was our first, well, it was my first game. I think Matt may have played it once or twice before. I'm not too sure, but we got a game from set up to finish in about 90 minutes or just over which is spot on for me you know time poor <laughs> um just what well, get down have a quick game get home get done whatever there's a lot to really enjoy about this game the card mechanics instead of rolling dice uh, is completely new to me you have a card deck for melee you have a card deck for arcane actions such as shooting or magic and that's pretty much it the melee deck is quite different. You draw a card, your opponent draws a card, well, choose a card from your hand, and you choose something from your column, and depending on what they choose, that imp that tells you how much damage you deal to them and how much damage you get in return. Really straightforward. The arcane deck is a lot more fun, though. Um, there's a bluffing aspect to that, which I have quite enjoy. Unfortunately, I've got quite an open face, I'm quite honest, I wouldn't do well in a tournament setting with this, um, really, but, you know, it's a lot of fun. You might need a specific blue card, well, you might need a card from the blue deck to pull off your arcane action, um, and you might want to, you might need to inflict three damage on somebody to, to finish them off, they drop a moonstone, and then you can pick it up. 
So you have a look at your hand and you've only got one blue card and it's only got a one on it. Um, the card, the, the decks are red, blue and green and they're numbered one, two and three. You really need a three. So are you honest? Do you put your one card down and say, it's just a one, here we go? Or do you get a bit cheeky and do you say, I've got a, I've got a blue three here, mate. That's going through. You put your card face down, then it's up to your opponent to decide if you're bluffing or not. Um, so again, you know, you can have a lot of fun with that. If you're good at poker, especially, like I said, I am not. Um, you only have a roll 1d6 at any one time in this, and that's to see if you get initiative and see if you get the first turn. The object of the game is to get more Moonstones than your opponent by the end of turn four. Moonstones are represented by D4s, and at the start of the game, you pick your handful of D4, you drop them over the middle of the table, and that's your scatter. Um, so you can see here, we've got different numbers at the top, and that number represents how deep the Moonstone is buried in the ground, therefore how many actions it takes to bring it up. So Vicious Midget here, he'd have quite an easy one. He'd have to spend one action to harvest that Moonstone, and it's his, that goes onto his card, that's then in your, in your tally. Flintlock here, slightly less lucky, he's got four, so it cost him four actions to harvest that Moonstone. Um, amusingly, Bug, no sorry, Beaky Bobby, um, has a special rule called Weakling on his card, which means it costs him one extra point uh, activation to, uh, to get a Moonstone. In a nutshell, it's a very straightforward, very fun game. I'll definitely play it again. I've got a couple more miniatures at home to paint um, for each one of these factions. I've got an ogre and a giant. Um, I'm definitely going to be looking at picking up a few more models for each of these factions because they're just, as I've said earlier, they're just so much fun. They're a really, really strong, like Terry Pratchett sort of vibe, a bit Monty Python. I believe one of the concept artists worked on the Jim Henson feature Labyrinth. So those of you of a certain age, i.e. my age, <laughs> mid to late 30s, you'll, uh, you'll remember that one, I'm quite sure. All in, a lot of fun to play. Like I say, it was really, really fast. Um, I don't want to keep going over it, but it was just, it was fun. It was very lighthearted. Um, you know, just sat down, we had a laugh, we played through it. Sure, we got a few bits and bobs wrong, so we got, uh, wrong. we're going to go back and revisit that. But otherwise, just absolutely great. I really recommend it. I'm definitely going to be playing at the Weekender. So get on board, come to the Weekender, have a game of Moonstone with me. Um, and yeah, that's it. So we're just going to head over to the sign off now. Thank you very much for your time today, folks. I've really enjoyed doing this Moonstone video and I'm really looking forward to playing more of it. If you want to play me at Moonstone, I'm just local to Element Games, Northwest Gaming Centre, and I'm going to be bringing it to the Weekender. Details for that can be found down on the links below. If you're not a member of the Top Table Gaming community on Facebook, I highly recommend joining. Um, myself and the other hosts are in there all the time. The people we've got in there are absolutely fantastic. It's a really welcoming, warm community feel that we've got going on. And I'd also recommend the Moonstone Players Facebook group if you're not uh, if you're not a member of there already. Uh, you see some excellent, excellent paint jobs and uh, conversions and and what have you in there um so once again thank you very much for your time i've been top table lee and this has been moonstone